Uh, and on this, like there's more coming down the line when we look at these decisions that are made in Europe around sanctions. Um, there is, um, is there any reticence at European level about imposing these sanctions because of the potential impact that they will have on households? Of course, there's huge concern because there is a price to be paid for bringing the sanctions in. Uh, no doubt about it. But, you know, the price of the, the, the war continuing and the impact on the whole of Europe and our democracy. I mean, Putin is effectively fighting all of us and our democratic values. So it's really important that that war is stopped. We're giving 600 million a day uh, to, to buy gas and oil uh, from Russia. We have to stop that. But what you have to do at the same time is you have to do everything possible as quickly as we can to reduce the, that dependency. And that's what the EU is doing with this new project of Repower EU, which you can't do it overnight, but you have to reduce that dependency as quickly as you can. Uh, would you agree, Richard, these sanctions no, are needed? No, I, I, I don't. I think, that, I think sanctions are counterproductive. They're going to hurt everybody. And Do you think they're counterproductive everywhere or would you be yeah, in favour of the boycott, divestment, say, say in the likes of um, Israel... Would you be in favour of the that in that instance, yeah, but a, not in this Yeah, the, diff the difference is that the Israeli state is an apartheid state. It's not a question of, of this regime or that government. It's a, it's a state that is built on the oppression of people, as is, or as was, <clears throat> excuse me, the apartheid state of South Africa. In Russia, the problem is the Putin government, OK? In the same way as during the Iraq war, the problem was the Bush government. We never argued for sanctions against the United States because we understood it was Bush's war, it's just so, like this is It's Putin's softer than war. guns, though, you know, from an anti-war stance. But, you have but, to but there use are economics, <coughs> There are alternatives to both, and that is to oppose war and militarisation generally. And what I find deeply ironic is that some of the people who are rightly condemning Putin's warmongering now were supporting, or certainly saying nothing, when uh, the US was invading Iraq and Afghanistan, mm. or when Saudi was bombing the hell out of Yemen for the last uh, five years, saying nothing about it because their allies were supporting this slaughter, but now they're calling out, rightly, Putin. But they're also saying, and the answer to this, okay. by the well, way, I is have no surprise. Right. I have to there. say, there. Ben, I'm not <clears> at all. <throat> when I listen to my Eastern European colleagues who know Putin better than anybody else, they're absolutely clear that we need economic sanctions because you have to use everything at your disposal to deal with a fascist like Putin. You, you cannot be given that amount of money to, to, to literally uh, allow him to do the kind of aggression and attacks that we're seeing. You have to deal with Russia economically. You do have to isolate them economically. You have to weaken them economically. And you have to do it militarily as well, as we're seeing. Of course, everybody well, why, wants why peace, you, Richard. But why listen, do you not propose sanctions against Saudi Arabia then, Francis? We're talking about Russia right now. Ah, Look at the aggression well, that's sorry, there. The people of Yemen are being killed by Saudi yes, right and now. What's happening in right Yemen now. is just as bad. Look, you didn't but even, no sanctions you didn't been called even for against Saudi. When the, when the president... <laughs> Zelensky spoke uh, 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 to the door. Because I, I mean, don't believe militarization is the answer. And I don't I'm believe... Well, what do you do with an aggressor standards. like Putin? It's, it, how do you deal with when an there, aggressor when like there is Putin? Consistent you have to deal with it economically and standards. militarily. And, briefly and you on have that, to try and protect briefly Ukraine. On that, just before we go, because we, we are on this subject, and it again was, was brought up this week about you know a referendum, putting it to the people about this European Defence Force. Um, do you think a referendum is a good idea... We absolutely, <clears throat> we put a bill into the door recently calling for a referendum because we want to enshrine neutrality in the Irish constitution. The Irish government, on the other hand, seem to want to use the Ukrainian crisis as a, an excuse to move and us away from neutrality. It, interesting on that because Leo Varadkar again saying that he thought that people, you know, would be very much in favour of us being part of a European defence force. Do you mm -hmm. think that's the case? Has he got, has he got the mood right there? I don't know. It's hard to know with the public because we actually saw in a poll, in the same poll once that said that um, Irish people were in favour of keeping our neutrality and then in the same poll another number of people, the same amount of people wanted to join NATO. So I don't think people really understand or understood the question they were being asked. I think the Irish people very much appreciate our neutrality. Um, I think neutrality is an important mm. role to play when it comes to these kind of conflicts. There has been a push, not from all of Fine Gael, but some of uh the TDs that they want, you know, talk about adult conversations about ne neutrality. I don't personally hear that from the people that I'm talking to. But and as Richard said, you know, if they wanted to have a referendum, it would put it to bed. But I just don't Do you think, think there's that, a big I don't appetite think it's for this a priority. Adult, but I, I, I think conversation what's very Francis. clear is uh, is that the Irish people are are not a bit neutral about what's happening in Ukraine. 
not one bit politically neutral. And I think we're having a better debate about neutrality now than we've ever had. Because we're, we're now really examining, what does neutrality mean? You're not neutral about democratic values. You're not neutral about what Putin is doing. And I think uh, to, when you see Denmark overwhelmingly yesterday deciding to be part of defence and security, okay. you see Sweden, you see Finland, um, I think there's a new mood and a, and a need for a new debate. And it's not about How is army. joining NATO it's, a move towards Nobody peace. wants to join NATO. So, but having a discussion at a European level, sorry, about defence okay. and security, about cyber attacks, we're not going to be able to deal with this on our own. There we have Richard, to leave it. We're going that, to need other people all, and work with other countries. That's all we have time for on that.